So in my last video, I talked about how you can create procedurally generated maps with parallax mapped rooms. And I want to showcase the process for creating those rooms because it's very quick, very efficient. Um, I'm just going to jump right into it here. So I've got GIMP open, I've got my folders open, I've got my projects open. So we're going to start, start by going into GIMP here. We're going to open up our template file. Uh, all this is is a file that has a predetermined size. It's basically um, a 9 by 12 uh, size image, and I've got all my resources compiled already and my uh, uh, folders already compiled here, or layer groups, I should say. Uh, then we're going to go into the editor here. This is my sample editor where I've got some pre-made uh, rooms. I'm going to copy this one here. We're going to be doing configuration G, uh, which is basically you can exit out the left or the right, but the top and the bottom are going to be sealed off. So we're going to start by sealing those. And now this is the room that I'm going to use uh, and import over. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some adjustments to it. I'm going to change some of the layout. Uh, and I've got pretty much got all the tiles I need uh, set aside already, so I can just right-click instead of having to scroll through my uh, pages here. So let's just take a look here. Uh, let's open up some of the previous uh, G configuration rooms that we did before here, just to kind of get a look at what we've already done. Okay, so this one actually exits out the bottom and then connects to the side there. Uh, that one's fairly open. Oh, that's a different one. Uh, that one's fairly open. That one exits out the top. Uh, okay, so we've got two kind of open rooms and the two rooms that kind of are a little bit narrower. Let's do one where the exit is up on the top on the left side here. So what we're going to do, we're going to do this here. We're going to place some tiles like that. There we go. Bring that down. And okay, so that'll be where it exits out. The actual room itself exits out the top of the room, but it does have to connect to the middle, so it'll kind of come down there. And that's how we can kind of fake uh, the grid-like nature of the coordinates for the exits here. Uh, the exits are technically in the same place, but the room exit is technically up here. Now, okay, let's bring this down. Let's, let's do that one there. Da -da -da -da. I'm just going to kind of mutter to myself as I do this. It's actually a fairly quick process. This will probably only take about 10 minutes. Um, but I just want to showcase how quick and efficient this process can be and how it's going to save a ton of work in the long run. Previously, my method of creating parallax mapped dungeons was to create an entire 50 by 50 size room, like this big of a room, uh, an entire map. Uh, and now, instead, I just need to create 82 of these tiny little rooms, and then the game will randomly construct a dungeon by placing them all together. Let's put some water in here. So let's go like this. Uh, maybe narrow that up a bit. There we go. Yeah. Oh, oops, too far. There we go. Let's see, one, two, three, there we go. Place this one here. One, two. We're going to have to overwrite some of the overlay tiles, but we'll replace those once we're done, uh, In uh, once we're in GIMP. There we go. Okay, I think that's good. All right, so now we're going to print screen, take a screenshot, minimize that, go into GIMP, and we are going to paste that. I'm just going to center it. Use the arrow keys to get it into the precise location. Switch our rectangle tool. Select, whoops. Ah, oh, jeez. Select that. Copy, paste, new layer, and then delete the screenshot. And there we go. This is what we have here. So let's first replace these overlay tiles that we uh, erased. So I've got this tile set here. Uh, let's just take all of these and bring it in. Oh, that should be in all. There we go. Close that. And, okay, so we're going to need one of these. Just bring that in there. And we will need this. Oh, 
this. There we go. Bring that over. And, okay, so we'll delete that one. We'll bring those back later, but that's good. Okay, and there we go. We have general layout of the room. Oh, I missed a corner there, so let's bring that in as well. I believe it's this one here. Bring that up. Good, merge that together. All right, now let's put some scaffolding on the walls here. So we'll go in here. Uh, let's see, how many tiles do we have to work with? Four across and two there. All right, so let's go this one here. And then let's go two of those. And you know what, let's actually do two of these. There we go. Let's bring all those up and then we'll place them in the right configuration here. So we'll go one, two, that one can go there, and this one can go here. There we go. Let's merge those together. And here is the general layout of the room. So what we're going to do, I'm going to switch to my dodge and burn tool. Uh, I've got it set to size 64, opacity 75, and spacing 75, and I'm uh, doing the highlights here. Uh, reason I'm not doing shadows is if, is if I uh, dodge the shadows, you get that weird kind of visual little glitch there. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn off collision and we're going to burn the whole map, dodge, burn again, and dodge again. And that'll just give a little bit more texture to the map. It gives it a little bit more, you know, variation in the lighting and the, and the tone. Uh, it just gives it a bit of a more natural appearance, less flat, less uh, tile-based. And now let's bring in some decor. So I've got my resources folder here. Let's start by putting a lamp in and hang it from some of the scaffolding. Let's put it up here. I can turn grids back on. There we go. Let's kind of hang it from the scaffolding right there in between those bolts. Let's bring in, let's see here, uh, yeah, a little bit of a little dirt pile. Let's put that right there. Let's go with, uh, hmm, yeah, this tiny little barrel. We'll maybe put that on the corner of that uh, pond. We'll just put it right down here, just kind of move it into place where we want it. That's nice. Uh, a little bit to the left. There we go. Let's see. Oh, yeah, you know what? Let's put some cracks in the wall right where that scaffolding is broken. So right about there. I'll actually move that a little bit to the left and a little bit up. Uh, a little bit. Mm, yeah, that's good. There we go. Now let's see here. Uh, yeah, let's bring in a barrel. Put that here, kind of move it up a little bit so that it looks like it's closer to the wall. And then we'll put, let's say, this crate. Just kind of pulling things out at random. We'll put that there. And then we'll do another small thing, maybe like one of those jars. Where is that? There, a little broken jar. We'll put that in the corner there. Like that, good. Okay. Uh, and this actually looks pretty good. I don't think we need to do too much more with this. Uh, let's maybe throw one more thing in. Let's throw in like a... Yeah, let's throw in... Oh, you know what? Actually, better idea. Because uh, this is a mine. There's going to be rubble. Let's bring in this rubble pile here, and let's figure out where we want to put this. Let's put it maybe right here, and we will cinch this up a little bit. Bring that down. Oh, that's the wrong tool. There we go. There we go. Okay, that's good. Um, actually, I didn't need to merge that because that is going to be part of the overlay. So I'm just going to move that out for now. Uh, and I think that's good. I did overwrite that dirt pile, though. Where, where, did, where did that go? There it is. Let's just move that out more to the middle here. I could put it off center, but there's a reason I'm not going to. Uh, let's put it in the hallway. There we go. Okay, so that's it, basically. Uh, let's bring this light graphic out, and we're going to put that right over the lamp. 
Let's also create a shadow layer. So I'm just going to create a new layer filled with transparency. Go to the bucket tool and fill it entirely with black. Uh, set the opacity to 50. That needs to get moved down. There we go. And then we're going to take our eraser tool. We're going to take this brush here, the uh, uh, number 2, hardness 25, size. We're going to set that to 128. And then we're going to go over to the shadow layer here and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that basically just makes it look like that light is actually ca uh, getting rid of some of the shadows around it. Uh, you can do a larger brush size, but I'm deliberately keeping it small for this map. Now, let's see here. Uh, I think that's everything. So now we just need to create the overlay. So we'll create a layer group, call it overlay. Now, because we dodged and burned uh, the map, uh, these tiles here have some... Uh, slight variations in their texture and in their tone. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to this layer here. We're going to take these three, because these are all the... Oops, that's wrong. There we go. We're going to take those three. These are the only tiles that will appear over the head of the player. We're going to copy this corner, and we're going to place it over top. And we're going to copy this corner place it over top of any of the matching tiles, at least the ones that will uh, overlap the player. Like, we don't need to put one here because the player can never reach there, but we do need to put one up here. And then the last one here, this here, will go one there and one there. Let's merge those all together. And then we'll go shift Control s to select everything, copy the base layer, paste it, get rid of this, and now we have our overlay. We'll place that there. That's the overlay there, so if we turn that on and off, that will, yeah, that works. Okay, now collision. We're going to uh, select our text tool. I'm going to go to white up at the top here and up in the corner. And what we need to do is determine the collision for this map using numbers going from upper left to bottom right. So zero means it's impassable. One means it is passable and things can spawn there. Two means a chest can spawn there. 3 means that it is passable, but nothing can spawn there, and 4 means it's a spawn point for either a player or a monster. So from the top left to bottom right, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 across, 0. Oh, new line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, and now we're going to go 0, 3, 3, 3, 3 because we don't want anything spawning in those points because it'll block access. 0, 0, 0, 0, new line, 0, 3, 0, 0, 3, 1, and we're going to make the chest spawn here, so we'll go 2, 0, 0, and the next line down will go 0, 3, 0, 0, 3. I want the overlay to have nothing spawn behind it, just so we don't get any hidden events. 1, 3, because I don't want anything to spawn in front of the chest. Zero, 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 three, zero, 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 one, 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 zero, three, three, zero, zero, one, one. Let's make the player spawn here. So we'll go four, three, three. Good. And now zero, 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 one, zero. And then the rest is all zeros because there's no. Uh, none of these tiles the player can access. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We'll just copy that and paste it twice. Done. Okay. This is the collision for this map. So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, get rid of all the line breaks, make this into one line. Oops. Deleted a zero by accident. We're going to select it, copy it, hide it. We're going to hide the shadow and the light layer. And now we're going to export this as... G, because that's the configuration we're working on, and we're going to paste that uh, string of numbers there into the file name. And that, the game will take that file name, read it as collision, like read it as individual characters, and overwrite the collision of the map based on that. So that's the base layer. Let's move that into our folder here. So this is the game folders that we have to construct this particular dungeon. Basically, it goes into this, uh, into the graphics folder, into this rooms folder. It takes the folder name based on the dungeon, 
uh, and then it pulls the images from these files here. So we'll take this one, put it into here. The overlay will export as well with the same file name so that the game can find it. And that's how it co uh, corresponds them into the overlay. Light layer, we'll export that. Move it into light. And shadow layer, no, not text, shadow. We're going to set the opacity back to 100, export that. Let's set the opacity back down to 50 just for fun. There we go. And this is basically our room. Now I'm just going to save this as a as Bloodstone G5, because it's the fifth room in this configuration that I've done. I'll move this into the shadow, and the, and the game will automatically implement this. So I don't have to do anything else in the actual game itself, in the engine. It, it will just automatically be like, oh, that's in that folder. We can use that, so we'll throw that in. Uh, we're going to go into our script editor, and in our procgen uh, script, I'm going to comment this in. And what this does is it will only generate rooms with the G configuration, just to make it easier for testing. It'll look a little weird because the rooms won't connect properly. Um, but then I'll kind of comment that out and show you what it looks like after. I'm just going to turn that down so it doesn't pick up on the microphone. So now let's go to our dungeon and let's see if that room generated correctly. Uh, not this one. No, here it is, perfect. This is the room we just finished, and it will automatically put it into the dungeon uh, where it makes sense. And it looks like our shadow layer and our light layer is working correctly. Uh, our overlay looks like it's working correctly. Now we do need to test the collision, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on a switch here that uh, basically overwrites the tiles when the ga game gets loaded with tiles that have the same collision, but have uh, some a, a slight tinge to it and a slight color to it so that you can see what uh, actually got overwritten. Just like this. And let's see if we can find that room that we just made. Here we go. Okay, so these are all blue. That's good. They can be traversed, but they cannot uh, spawn anything on them. The green ones can spawn things, and they can be traversed. Purple can spawn things, and that is a spawn point for a player or monster. And yellow is a spawn point for a chest. Now, I'm not seeing any chests. Let's take a look and see if that is actually working correctly by checking to see where our chests are. Let's see. Okay, so let's see if we can find a chest in one of those spots. We might not be able to. Let's, we'll, we'll head down to a different uh, floor if we can't find one. Oh, here we go. Yeah, perfect. And so chests are spawning on those yellow tiles now. That's perfect. So now let's actually, I'm just going to show you what this looks like without um, this line of code. All that does is just for testing, just to see if it actually will use, it, it just to make sure that it only uses the rooms with the configuration that I just built so that I can test them easily. But let's see what it looks like without that line of code so that it actually properly generates uh, a working usable dungeon that's properly connected with no weird isolated sections or cut off parts of the map. And here we go. We got some item bags in this room here. I can see the exit over there, so we'll head that way. Uh, I'm not seeing any chests, but let's see if we can find one on the next floor. Let's go to the next floor and a couple more item bags together. It's kind of weird how they sometimes spawn in the same spot, but they also will, the way that this works, it will, it will never spawn two events on top of each other. Um, they may be right next to each other, but they'll never be on the same space. Oh, and there's a chest. Let's take a look. What do we got? Garbage. That's fine. And yeah, that's basically how this game constructs. I just realized I didn't do that in full screen, but it's fine. That is how I construct rooms for this dungeon. All I need is 82 different rooms with specific configurations. These are the configurations that I need for them. 25 rooms left in this dungeon. 
uh, and I only need 82, and then it can perfectly construct random dungeons without ever using the same room twice on any given floor. Uh, it may use this room twice throughout the course of the dungeon on different floors, but it will never use this same room twice on the same floor once this script is actually completed, once I have all the configurations in place. But yeah, that is it. That is how I make rooms for my dungeons in uh, Thrall using this new proc gen system. It's actually pretty cool. It's very, very quick, very efficient. I can easily get five, six, seven of these done in a day, uh, depending on how much time I have. So it, uh, it really just makes things a lot more streamlined. And the nice thing about it is that no matter how big the dungeon itself is, it could have a thousand floors. I only need 82 maps. The longer the dungeon goes, the more familiar certain rooms will start to feel. And I can add more than 82 but I only ever need a minimum of 82 rooms to make any size of dungeon in the game. So it really just kind of streamlines the workload and makes it a lot more manageable. And with any luck, this game will actually be released within the next uh, two years, two and a half. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, want to share that? Hope you have a great day. See you next time.